Yo, what's going on friends? It's Jonathan and welcome back to another JC production where I deliver your daily dose of hotness. And in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at some micro size hotness. This is the RX-0 Mark II from Sony. It's an interesting little camera that tries to fill the void between action camera and vlogging camera, an area that I didn't know existed, but apparently it does. And I guess you buy this if you want the best of both worlds. In this video, I'm gonna give you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and how Sony could improve this little thing moving forward because it does need to definitely elevate the user experience and also the functionality for someone like me personally to run out and buy one. So let's not waste any more time and jump straight into this. So let's go ahead and kick this thing off with what I don't like about the RX-0 Mark II because there's fewer things that I don't like about it than what I do like about it. The first thing that I really don't like about this camera are the controls, the ergonomics, and the button layout. These buttons are way too small. And I'm gonna go ahead and steal one of the everyday dad's terms here and say that the fiddliness on this camera is pretty bad. Here's what they could do to get rid of all these problems and it's my next issue with this camera and that's the fact that there's no touch screen. If they would just put a touch screen on this camera it would really change the way you operate this camera. You could swipe up to go to the menu, you could change different functions just by tapping on them that alone would change the entire user experience. Now, I really appreciate the fact that behind this door, they included a 3.5 millimeter mic jack. You also have a micro USB port and a micro HDMI port and then a micro SD card slot. The issue with the mic jack is there's no cold shoe or hot shoe mount on this camera. They did include a quarter 20 on the bottom. So technically, if you just wanted to hand hold this thing, you could put like a little cold shoe down here and then mount the microphone straight to the bottom of this. Or if you're using the vlogging tripod that Sony makes, you could get like an extension bracket and mount it on the bottom. But regardless, there's really no way to mount a mic straight out of the box onto this camera. At least they're giving you the functionality and the ability to add on to this. But unless you're planning on getting a cage, a bracket, or some type of mounting solution, it's just not gonna work straight out of the box. Outside of the hardware and its physical limitations, there are a few things with the usability and user experience that I really don't like about this camera, especially when we're talking about video. And the first thing that comes to mind is the autofocusing. When using autofocus in video with the RX-0 Mark II, you're given three different choices. You have manual focus, preset focus, and AFS, or where you have to half press the shutter to focus. There's no continuous autofocus, which is a big deal if you're using this as a vlogging camera. Now with the preset focus, you can pretty much use like a GoPro type focusing system where there's no focus at all. It just keeps everything in focus, which is okay. But if you're trying to get any kind of depth of field, you have to use AFS or manually focus which is definitely not practical if you are vlogging. The next thing is stabilization. The Sony RX-0 Mark II does feature electronic image stabilization and it processes it inside of the camera. However, it doesn't work at 120 frames per second in 1080p and the 4K is still really bouncy, like it doesn't look good. In order to get better stabilization, you have to bring that footage into the Play Memories app on your phone or tablet and then process it that way. You're better off just taking the footage and dropping it into your favorite NLE, such as Premiere Pro or Final Cut, and using the built-in stabilization in those programs. Like it just doesn't make any sense. So you should be able to adjust the amount of EIS within the settings on this camera, just like you can with Canon cameras. Another issue I ran into with the RX-0 Mark II is the display. If you're shooting in 4K or 1080p at 120 frames per second, the screen is really dim and you can't adjust the brightness whatsoever. And it's to the point where like you can't make out anything on the display if you're shooting in direct sunlight. Also, after like two minutes, the screen just shuts off. Battery life on the RX-0 Mark II really isn't that good. I mean, it is to be expected. The batteries are really small. It's the MPBJ1 style batteries, so they're very small. However, I was expecting to get a little bit more out of the battery, uh, considering how small this thing is and how small the display is. But um, I was able to average like between 40, maybe 45 minutes of use out in the sun, you know, using this as like a vlogging and action camera combo. So um, just bear that in mind, you're definitely gonna need to pick up some extra batteries with this. Finally, the biggest reason that I won't run out and buy this camera is the price. At 699 bucks, I feel it's just 
too expensive for what you're getting. At $700, you can get a used DSLR or maybe even a brand new one depending on what sales are going on. I know you can get a brand new mirrorless camera with an interchangeable lens system and a kit lens for 700 bucks. There is still a market for this camera, so now let's go ahead and transition into what this camera got right and what I really enjoyed when I was using it. So first and foremost, I gotta give it to its compact size and form factor. This thing is ultra portable. It's easy to toss in your pocket, pull it out, start recording at any time, any place, anywhere. And that's really where this shines because you know what they say, the best camera that you can get is the camera that you have on you always. And that's where this comes in handy. Uh, to go along with that, the durability of this thing is just phenomenal. Being able to bring a camera with you on vacation or to a theme park and not having to worry about it breaking because of the ruggedness of this thing. You can hand it to your kids, have them run around like crazy. This thing's gonna be okay. You can uh, you know, go in the water, out of the water. You could do tons of like action sports with this and that is just phenomenal. Making this pretty much like the ultimate vacation travel camera because you're going to be able to accomplish all of the family videos and photos that you need to accomplish with this. To go along with that, the image from this is gorgeous. It has a one inch sensor, which is the same size sensor that's in the RX100. You have picture profiles and you even get S-Log2, which is great if you're trying to really push your image. It records 4K up to 30 frames per second at 100 megabits per second, which is good for you know editing. Uh, but if you want more, you can output a clean HDMI signal in ProRes 8-bit 422. So if you're trying to use this in a professional workflow, it can definitely be done by hooking this up to something like the Adamus Ninja V. thing is the fact that this does feature Sony's new processor, meaning that there's no record limit and it doesn't overheat, at least from my experience. It does get really hot though, especially if you're outside recording 4K and it's like 100 degrees outside, it almost gets like uncomfortable to hold hot. Just like all modern Sony cameras, there's no crop in 4K. It's using the full width of the sensor and it's oversampling, meaning that it's actually shooting at a higher resolution and then compressing it to a 4K image, giving you a super sharp and pristine image. This little guy can also shoot at 960 frames per second or 1000 frames per second if you're shooting in PAL or PAL. And it looks okay. Like I don't recommend that you run out and buy this and just record everything in 960 frames per second. Like it's definitely not that good. 480 frames per second is definitely doable and usable in most situations. Just make sure you have a lot of lights, but the fact that it's on here is definitely a great addition. Finally, I really like the fact that Sony put clear image zoom on this little camera. It really comes in handy. It gives you like a 1.5 times zoom. There's no loss in image quality or image degradation. It still looks nice and sharp, and it's enough of a zoom to help you reframe your shot and get a different field of view. And if you hook this up to the little Sony vlogging grip, you can actually zoom in and out from the two buttons right there on the grip. Now let's talk about some ways Sony could improve the RX0 lineup moving forward. First and foremost, that price needs to come down. I don't think that this camera should be any more than 550 bucks. I think that's an ideal price point for a camera of this caliber. I know there's probably a ton of R&D that went into the manufacturing of this product, but regardless, 550 bucks I think is a stellar price for this camera. Also, you need to add some better stabilization or at a setting for the user to adjust the amount of EIS that is being put into the footage. Even if that means 
you know, really punching in and turning that 24 millimeter equivalent field of view to like a 28 millimeter, that's fine as long as the user has that choice. Also, NDs. I mean, the RX100 Mark V, RX100 Mark IV, I don't know if the Mark III had it, I'm pretty sure it did. They have electronic ND filters. This could really benefit from a touch screen. It would improve the functionality and the overall user experience to be able to change your settings and scroll through the menu using a touch screen instead of these small buttons would make a huge difference. And also being able to touch the focus. I mean, that is something that this camera is really missing. And speaking of focus, you gotta add continuous autofocus, especially with face tracking. I really hope Sony can improve this camera because I like it. I, I really, really like this form factor. I like what this camera brings to the table. If you're not already subscribed and you like this kind of content, you should stick around by subscribing. Help me help you. Let's grow together and click the bell icon so you can be alerted when new content drops. If you want behind the scenes hotness and some non YouTube related flavor, then go ahead and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Instagram is definitely popping right now. So you might want to get in while it's hot. And uh, other than that, I will talk to you water loving individual walrus people that shoot video on cameras like this in the next one.